Can I just start things by asking you about the sequencing? Now, we've ended this film with Neil. Yeah. And can you remind us how shuffled the order is of the subjects over the years? And how do you decide? Well, I mean, that, Please hold the mic up. It'll be a bit easier. Like that? Yeah, yeah that's good. Can you hear? Uh, I mean, it's, it's different every time. And it's different because I need a really strong end. <clears throat> and invariably, it's either been Tony or it's been Neil. Uh, last time we ended with Tony because we had um, the world the World Cup being played in Great Britain in the in the very places that he had been uh, running around with with dogs and whatever. So that was a strong image, and and uh, he is so emotional mm -hmm. that it's hard not to finish with him. But you know, it's uh, there's, we've got a lot of good stuff, and uh, I, I'm not going to complaining about it, and I never wonder whether I got the order right or whatever. You, I've, got, I've only got four women, although I've stolen some as wives. And okay, and so can you give us a sense of how much of your life has been spent on this? I mean, for example, what was the most amount of time that you put into any one of these episodes? Yeah, I, I suppose that the arc of my experience with it, which and this is a, sounds a strange answer, is the less I prepared, the better it was. Um, uh, only because then there was a spontaneity. It wasn't me with a, uh, with a whole load of questions and me, yes, like you. Um, <laughs> it tended to make it more spontaneous. Yes. And if, if I was spontaneous. <laughs> <laughs> If I was being spontaneous, it encouraged them to be spontaneous. But it took me ages to figure this out. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to have lists on paper and all that sort of stuff, but uh, it never really seemed to work out. It was better if I knew the principal things I needed to discuss and then just let it roll. And your interest has always been the class system and, and how it's worked, obviously, from the beginning. And you chose the subjects partly based on the drama that might be in their lives, the risks they were at. Yeah. Well, I mean, it had a very odd beginning uh, because when it, we, we, the first one was done, um, Paul Armand was a, a, a visiting... Well, he's Canadian. He was mm -hmm. a, a visiting doing some very high-powered The mic? The mic. Oh! I'll keep reminding you. <laughs> um, uh, so, 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 uh, he, he was there, doing like that. And he was doing some very, uh, very big, uh, sort of dramatic things, anyway. And then uh, they s this, uh, Granada decided, let's make this documentary. And they asked Paul to do it. And, of course, Paul who's a very good director and a very, ha hadn't frankly got a clue about the English class system. It is, a, it is a, you know, it, it is, as it were, a strange story, our class system. But anyway, I just joined Granada as a trainee and they put me on with, and they put me on with them. Um, <laughs> you'll be thinking about this tonight, won't you, me stood here like this. <laughs> I have to live with this. You have to <laughs> pretend you have a sore tooth. You, uh? need to, you have to pretend you have a sore tooth. Oh, okay. You need this to be closed. Um, but but, but uh, anyway, so, so um, he really didn't know anything about the English class system. And, I mean, he was a very good documentarian, shooter, and all that kind of stuff. But I, from the age of about three months, from my mother, who was tremendous uh, left-wing, um, you know, worker. I mean, she brought up three children, but she was very interested in politics and stuff like that, and so I was too, very much so. So then as we started doing uh, Seven Up, it became clear that really Paul didn't know what it was about. I mean, Paul wanted to make a nice documentary, and something, you know, some of it's beautiful, of 
the, the seven-year-old children are going around their business. But I um, was dead against it, that, and, and, and I was a very, I was a very polite person. That's a lesson to you all. Be very, very polite, and I managed to convince him that there was a much bigger story here than than that. You know, the fact is, just look around us, see the opportunities certain people have got, and other people haven't got, and whatever. And that is no way to build a society. And uh, that was the whole idea that Granada had, but they never saw it as more than one. But anyway, the, the first one <coughs> you know, really did stir the nation. I mean, everybody suddenly went, wow, holy cow. Um, but then nothing happened, and then suddenly, f five, uh, three years before we were due to, uh, well, th 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 three, uh, sorry, four years before the seventh year would have been up, uh, the, you know, the head of Granada p p got me in the uh, got me in the restaurant there and said, "Do you want to? Should we do it again?" And I said, "Ah," I said, "That sounds like a good idea." And he says, I, we think you should do it. I mean, Paul had left the company, was back here in Vancouver or wherever, beautiful spots like here. And um, so we did it again. And I remember very well, uh, at the end of the first week of shooting, I, I, I called the guy up who was running Granada and said, look, I don't want to spend my life working in England. You know, I want to go to America and et cetera, et cetera. But I guarantee to you, that if we do this every seven years, I'll always be there, which I was um, the next eight times. I always showed up. And so that's how it started. And now it's the world's longest longitudinal yes. study of subjects. Yes. It's amazing. And will never be overtaken, I don't think. Yeah. Not in anybody's lifetime in this room without being <laughs> much fun. Um, but uh, no, and, and it was, you know, it was picked up by other countries, and it's, that offered very interesting problems for us because it's only really worked in three countries. Uh, obviously, Great Britain. Um, um, what was it? What, what were the other two? Russia and South Africa. And America didn't make it at all, that we wasted a ton of money in America doing it. And because the thing is, the simple fact is you have to have access to all the film. So if one company provides the money for the first film and then someone for the second, who owns it? And unless you've got the whole thing, the whole copyright of everything, then you're, you're in trouble. So that's why countries dropped out so quickly. America was a nightmare. I mean, I think two of the, th the three big machines, as it were, um, took it and then let it go because they didn't know what to do with it. They didn't know where it was going. But the only two other countries, I mean, I believe this worked well because the English car system was the kind of one of the shocking things in, um, in the world of whatever. Um, and that was, it was embarrassing to the country how bad it was. And in, in a way, this film sh showed them, I mean, the Seven Up showed them how unfair society was and how callous it was, and et cetera, et cetera. So I think that was always the underneath drumbeat, if you want. And in, in Russia, Russia has been crucified for hundreds of years by their, um, you know, by their aristoc aristocrats, and then, and the, this the, the the German one, sorry, the Russian one is very good, and it's made in Russian by a very good Russian director, you know, and it's it's got their eyes open. And the other one, which was stunning, was South Africa. I thought, why is South Africa? Why did they sort of work to it? And it was because of AIDS. They messed up the whole business of AIDS, and people are still dying it from. And so, in a sense, every time they do an up, they clock how many people are dead. So it was. It has to be something 
particular that you can put your, your finger on, which becomes a symbol for the whole of that particular film. And in Britain, it's the class system. Huh? In Britain, the class system. Yes, the, absolutely, yeah. Uh, questions uh, from the audience. We have a couple here. We'll start here, please. The woman in the aisle. Yes, behind. Sorry, just a sec. The woman behind you, and then we'll come to you. You'd say that, uh, if, if the camera was on you at the age of yeah. seven, what would we see? Uh, I was very, very. Sh I was the oldest of three children, but I was very, very quiet. If you can believe that, and um, generally was frightened to to kind of step up or anything like that. But once I've discovered the t film and television and things like that, and knew what I wanted to be. But I think you would have found me s superbly bo boring. Um, <laughs> there was no film in that one, I thought. But, um, so was that, was, that was, have I answered the question? Yes, and then yeah. the gentleman here, please. No, it so The question is, who's going to carry this on when Michael no longer can? When you no longer can? No, well, I, I think I've, I'm going to let that play by itself. I mean, we've been lucky all the way through in, in lots of ways, and we've always pulled it through. So I think when I drop dead, and if I don't do 80, what is it, 84, someone will. It'll have to be someone within the family. and Because you know the one person who absolutely crushed me was a guy who was working for the BBC who was one of the original ones who pulled out and then he could have taken it over, couldn't he? He could have been my backstop, but he didn't. And uh, he's unconscionably annoying, uh, so I, I wouldn't let... I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't go uh, to my grave thinking he was going to take it over. I mean, I learned lots of lessons doing this thing, you know, about how, how, what questions to ask and how to treat them. But it seemed to me that I shouldn't be up their noses uh, in between films, because it a, might, might give them nightmares of what, how they were thinking. <laughs> Because it's not easy for, for them, even you know, even today. But um, you know, I decided that I would keep an eye on what was going on, but I wouldn't necessarily go and see them or anything like that, unless there was something awful that you know, had to be dealt with. So I did try and think. You know, it really has to be what the story is every seventh year. And so then, if I spent a lot of time in between watching what was going on, I'd have about a you 20-hour know, film or something like that. So I had to discipline it and justify it by saying, you know, I drop in every seven years to see how it's going, and since seven, you know, it's a kind of biblical thing. And I've always stuck to that. Um, you know, we, we, if something happens, someone passes away, to, you know, I'll go and shoot a, a bit of the funeral or something like that. But I, I won't. I won't be, uh, you know, on on their collars the whole time, saying, "What's going on now? What's going on?" Because I I also need to get a breath from them and to be able to look at them again freshly without having, you know, I mean, we just make sure that uh, we check in with them every year just to see how are they well and blah blah blah. But we don't get into anything. We don't discuss anything. So, you know, I think that was the best way. It took me quite a long time to figure it out, I must say. But uh, the le less was more. The, it was more of a surprise even for me. So when I would sit down with them for the last three of these films, I really wouldn't necessarily know what I was going to ask them. I wanted to let it, you know, happen organically. Because, you know, they're, they're always very chatty if, 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 if they're in... If I'm in their good books, they're, uh, they're very chatty. I'm so sorry that there's no time for more questions. So, what? yes, it's, it's terrible. Just let me say, I just want to thank you from, for all of us that you could so easily have just done your big films 
and not as being as responsible to this project. So thank you so much for your work. Thank you very much. Thank you.